Welcome back. So today I'm looking at Zorin OS 15. Zorin OS is one of those distributions that has been around for quite a while. It holds a special place in my heart because um, Zorin was one of the first distributions that I was uh, really compelled by in terms of uh, introducing other Windows users to Linux. And that's kind of a heritage that in some ways uh, has been both a blessing and a curse for Zorin because uh, Zorin OS has, uh, it started out with a very, very, very young development team. And again, that's kind of close to my heart as well because I was pretty young when I started using Linux for the first time. And, uh, but when Zorin picked up this reputation of being a sort of a gateway to Linux um, for Windows users, they kind of, uh, I feel like it's possible that they kind of ostracized some of the, the Linux diehards among us um, by saying it was it was too much like Windows and there was just too much going on um, and it was too uh, it was just too noob friendly and I, I didn't always agree with that um, with that stigma but I can I can pretty comfortably say that with a release like Zorin OS 15 the the heritage of just being the the Windows uh, look-alike in the Linux world I think we can bury that a long time ago um, because honestly, Zorin OS does, in my opinion, bring something unique to the table. It's very easy to write Zorin off as another, yet another Ubuntu derivative. Um, but again, I'm trying to speak into what this distribution, uh, what makes it unique and why you would want to consider using it. Whether you've been a Linux user for a very long time or whether you are sitting on the fence wondering whether you should make the leap, um, Zorin would probably be a great place for you to land. Here's some simple reasons why, as we kind of tool around with, uh, with Zorin OS 15. All right, so first things first, you've got the desktop shell. The desktop shell is actually based on GNOME 3.30. Now, if you're paying attention, uh, this release is also based on Ubuntu 18.04, which is a long-term support release. Well, it's 18.04.2 technically. So it's a long-term support release. So you aren't exactly running like the latest version of kind of anything, um, which you could see as a knock. You can see we're running a pretty outdated kernel at this point, and the GNOME stack isn't exactly the latest either. But you will notice that GNOME 3.30 does put it ahead of the release that came out with Ubuntu 18.04. So the Zarin crew uh, actually backported GNOME 3.30 uh, into 18.04 and they have their own kind of custom stack and uh, and list of extensions here that they have uh, installed and enabled uh, or some enabled and disabled by default based on what kind of layout you want. Now I do want to point out that I've installed tweaks after the fact but you can kind of see here that most of these extensions are spins of already existing extensions um, just kind of made to fit and respond to the Zorin OS shells desktop commands that you might give it. So all of this ties together for a very unique uh, settings and appearance panel. Um, as you can see, they have a few different layouts to choose from. Now in the Zorin OS core edition, you will have these top three to play with. And then you can also then jump down and uh, and use these bottom three. Now, what I want to say first up is that there's there's this common misconception that you're missing out on something by installing the core edition. And that is just simply not the case. Uh, the things that you get in the ultimate edition that you don't get in the core edition are very easy to go and get yourself. It's literally just cutting down on the amount of time that you spend fiddling around with stuff. So anything that, any of the layouts here that you see in the layouts um, selector of Zorin OS, you can very, very, very easily uh, achieve this with GNOME tweaks and, uh, and just customizing it to how you like it. Now, this is the default shell and it very much resembles a, a Windows 7 slash Windows 10 kind of look. You've got other options there for um, your older style windows and also one that's curious to me is the uh, touch enabled layout. The touch enabled layout is fascinating to me because uh, in the age where uh, a lot of computers these days, including the one that I'm recording this video on, the Yoga 730, uh, we've got a lot of two-in-ones out on the market today and we've got windows to thank for that uh, in a lot of ways. But Linux hasn't really um, hasn't really lent into that world because uh, a lot of desktop Linux users hate the idea of having to use a touch interface on top of their uh, their work machine, and I totally get that. But for the average Joe, um, for the person who's just wanting an alternative to Windows, 
uh, having a touch enabled mode that actually makes sense is actually makes like is actually very clever um, because for me personally like if I'm going to use this on my laptop um, Wayland the the display server that Zorin has support for um, that gives you a much better touch experience than does Xorg and you couple that with a very well thought out uh, touch enabled mode and suddenly you've got a uh, you've got an operating system that can um, that can adapt to its use case just as well as what Windows can and that was one of the key selling points for Windows 10 when it launched was the fact that it could adjust so the fact that we've got something that is well thought out and works coherently and doesn't mess with a bunch of stuff when you do it is is a nice touch now if you're going to pick up a theme in anything that I say in this video it's going to be that it it really does uh, smooth any of the the rough edges off Linux to the point where most users would be comfortable with it. Now, I say this with a huge grain of salt in that the problem with creating a user interface that apes or that, that mimics the, the, the user interface of another um, competing operating system is that users will come in, they'll see that things kind of work the same in some regards, and then they will assume that everything will work the same when that's simply not the case. Um, now, that's a whole different argument that we can have some other time. But, uh, but that's just something to be aware of. When it comes to um, the, the outdated nature of the, the, the base that this is using, I personally don't see it as a big deal at all. Um, an older kernel is not really that much older um, and the way around older software that you would interact with, applications and so forth, can be remedied by Snap and Flatpak, both of which Zorin supports out of the box. Now I want to say out of the box with a little bit of a, an asterisk next to it because while they do support snap packages out of the box and the and the snap store is is here in full force, um, Flatpak support is definitely there, but the FlatHub repository is not enabled by default. So you got to go and enable that yourself. But the Flatpak um, support is is very much there. So if you download a Flatpak um, reference file, it'll open up in the software center and away you go. It's no it's no real big deal. It's just nice to see that they've thought through the outdated software proposition. Again, considering that um, Zorin doesn't crank out a new release with every Ubuntu release, the, the, the attention to detail and the quality has to be there in order to sustain this distribution through its, through its life cycle. And, uh, and it's also worth mentioning that Zorin will, um, they will be offering an upgrade path from Zorin OS 12 Zorin OS 15 uh, down the road, as will education editions and light editions become available as well. Okay, so I've rambled on for a little bit. I wanted to bring I wanted to bring you all back to a real cheesy video that I did way back in like 2011. Uh, it was one of the first videos to kind of really blow up on my channel, and it was a comparison video that I did between Windows 7 and Zorin OS 4 or 5 at the time. And uh, and I was um, personally speaking, I wasn't um, like incredibly impressed with this as something that I would want to run, but I could see the massive potential with what um, the Zorin team were going after. And that's why I put way too much time into this video to try and uh, highlight the, the comparisons. But I think the bit that gets me now is the fact that you look at something like this and, uh, and you look at the, like the look and feel and the, the way that it, things are laid out and boy howdy, it looks dated, like it just really looks dated. Um, and kind of similar to, I guess, how uh, stage of life that I was in um, back in 2011 and probably a stage of life that the Zorin team were in being fairly young, uh, you know, your opinion of what looks good changes and it changes pretty significantly in the space of, well, 10 years or so. And um, so to land on something where we have a very, a very crisp, clear light theme. And then we also have a very nice uh, dark theme. And to have those that you can actually switch between whether uh, it'll do that automatically, whether it's day or night, and you can choose your own accent color. These are all really, really simple, but clean and wonderful user preferences that people can choose from. It's a really strange thing for me to get my head around that in today's day and age, I would actually say that projects like Zorin and Elementary and, you know, heck, even Ubuntu and, and the default Adwaita theme for GNOME, I would say all of them have a more consistent design language 
than Windows 10, possibly even than Mac OS. And that's just a bizarre world to live in, in, uh, in my opinion anyway. I'm not, I guess I'm not surprised, but it's just wonderful is, is what I'm trying to say. Another thing that I wanna just shine some light on is the fact that, especially when it comes to the resurgence of gaming on the Linux desktop, uh, Zorin OS has really done a great job of backing that up in a really good way. So even if you just install the core version, um, already you have access on the ISO to NVIDIA drivers out of the box. Um, so you can install those and get those up and running straight away. Also in the Zorin OS repositories, you also have access to Lutris. And Lutris, I mean, go and check out the um, uh, Linux experiments video on Lutris. Uh, because Lutris is one of the best revelations in Linux gaming that has ever lived. Uh, and the fact that they've bundled this in and it's available from the PPAs straight out of the box with uh, Zorin is amazing. And, uh, and again, the same can be said for Wine. They've actually packaged up Wine version 4.0, which, uh, which is needed by Lutris and Steam and others to get the latest uh, buttery performance. So before we get out of here, I wanna have a quick run through of the changes that have actually come in because there's some things that I haven't even touched on that are worth shining some light on. First up is Zorin Connect. Uh, it's basically a, a slightly tweaked version of GS Connect and KDE Connect. And I do like the little shout out in terms of all communications um, that are done between your phone and your laptop, uh, RSA encrypted end to end and happen on your local network. And I think in today's day and age, you can't be overstated enough with what you're doing with privacy and security and that kind of thing. So we've covered the theming, we've covered the dynamic adapting theme, and we've covered the touch layout, and, uh, and they've talked about the future of uh, how they're packaging apps. They've got the wonderful do not disturb button that I love so dearly. So it's great to see that out of the box. And they've highlighted a few other things in terms of productivity apps and stuff like that. So trying to summarize what this distribution is and what makes it unique. Here's my best effort. I think that Zorin creates a very coherent and very complete seamless user experience from start to finish. And it's definitely not gonna be everyone's jam. I totally get that. But at the same time, projects like this help push the needle forward with how, uh, with how polished and accessible Linux can appear to others. And, uh, and again, I don't wanna to get too um, I don't want to get too ushy gushy here, but even the uh, even the, their website, their marketing, um, and their launch video that they've done for this particular release is uh, is so polished in the way that it looks. I mean, we could definitely point to a certain uh, other company that has a very similar design language with their websites and uh, stuff like that, but. All of this sort of stuff is gonna to lead to a user experience that uh, people really uh, feel confident in using. And, um, and I think there's very few Linux distributions out there that market themselves well. Now, I bring up the marketing term because you can of course go and buy the ultimate edition of this distribution. And uh, the ultimate edition basically just comes with a bucket load of pre-installed software, some of the best stuff from the open source community, and, uh, and it all comes preloaded with a few extra um, little theming layouts, like I said before. Uh, all of this is to say that I personally believe that it is fantastic for a, uh, for a distribution to be able to create a business model where people can pay for the release if they want to. Um, they can cough up the 39 euros that it costs to buy the ultimate edition. And by doing that, they know they're supporting the main developers of the distribution and, uh, and helping cover the costs. I'm okay with that, but you know, man's got to make a living somehow. But regardless of the ethical argument that comes along with that, um, definitely go and check out the core edition at the very least. But I love the way this distribution looks, feels. It performs about on par with what you'd expect from Ubuntu. That is not the most performant distro out there, but it's no slouch either. Modern hardware, you'll be fine. And the only gripe that I would have is that the, the, um, the Windows key, that triggers the menu, you get a very limited option for um, searching. You don't get to search through settings or files or anything like that from the menu. You only get to search for apps. Um, so you only will get a list of applications from this default search box. It'd be great to see that rolled out to what the, um, I guess what the activities search is for GNOME in general when you, for example, if you search for like keyboard, you will to get access to some of the keyboard related settings. So that's that's a minor gripe. So that's my thoughts on that. In the very near future, I'm looking to get uh, the lead developer 
for um, Zorin OS onto IG Talks, and we're going to have a bit of a conversation about uh, about goals, past and present, for this distribution, and uh, hopefully dig into a little bit of the story behind it as well, because I really enjoy hearing where these projects come from and the people behind them. Thank you so much for watching. In the comments below, tell me a story about a time that you convinced somebody to uh, to try out Linux, and what was the bit that got them. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out.